Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Um, first of all, I like to apologize. I like to apologize that I'm not able to uh, present uh, this presentation in presence, that I'm not able to attend the conference in Washington this year. But I hope uh, this virtual presentation is also interesting for you and you can follow my, our thoughts. Uh, my name is Martin Ibner. I am from Graz University of Technology in Austria and I'm the head of the department Educational Technology and uh, we are a so-called service department and we are responsible for all um, e-learning activities at the university and we have to uh, servicize our lecturers as well as our students. Um, Austria, um, maybe you know it's in middle Europe and uh, Graz especially is about uh, 200 kilometers in the south of our capital in Vienna. And uh, I did this presentation and publication together with my two colleagues, Walter Nagler and Martin Schön, who assisted me uh, in doing all of this stuff. The idea of this uh, presentation and uh, research work is that uh, we begin in 2007 for the first time to um, make a survey, a survey um, with our uh, beginners, uh, the uh, students who are just coming to the university. And we were interested uh, in the so-called digital natives generation or net generation, because in 2007 we had this uh, huge debate about uh, their skills, competences and uh, their ownerships. Um, the students are different to those students um, as in 2001 or 1980, whatever. And um, therefore we begin a survey and we did this service now for 10 years. Every year, again and again, we repeat uh, so more or less the same questions to see um, are there trends, are there changes in their behaviors, are there changes in their communication um, possibilities, uh, whatever. And um, I would like to show you the results today. First of all, um, I like to ask the general research questions. So we just um, had the idea which trends can be seen uh, towards ownership of technological devices. We would like, we are interested in the communication behavior of our beginners. And uh, of course, we are also interested in the usage of e-learning platforms. So did they use, for example, e-learning technologies, uh, platforms, uh, web service, whatever, already in schools? And um, our interest is also what do you use for learning on a daily basis or sometimes often um, and also on a private purpose. So as a, what is uh, the digitalization uh, already uh, in our use. Um, the study, as I mentioned before, we have done now for about 10 years. It is done at the so-called welcome days. The welcome days at the universities are two days, uh, two days uh, where we introduce the university to our beginners. We um, introduce all service departments, um, all knowledge that they just need to make a very good start in their studies. And um, at the end of the second day, they get just a paper and pencil survey. And we are asking, of course, uh, how do you like these welcome days? And we also have a second uh, piece of paper where we are just asking all this thing about uh, digital uh, devices, communication behaviors, Web 2.0 technologies and whatever. And um, as I mentioned, it was in 2007 that we just started um, this survey. And we started this, as you can see, with uh, about uh, 600 students. And um, this year we have uh, about 945 students who just uh, filled out the survey. We have about uh, 1,200 beginners every year. So that means that we have about 70 to 80 percent of all beginners just filled out this survey. And um, if you sum up all uh, the 10 years, then we have uh, nearly 8,000 of students who already has done this survey, for example. And um, therefore, so we can um, give you some experiences of that. Yeah, the first question is um, the comparison of devices. So the, the question is rather simple. Which kind of uh, digital devices do you own? Um, and um, it's not amazing, for example, that of course you can see that uh, there is just one device uh, really up to 100% that is a so-called uh, mobile smartphone. Yeah, that is this time a mobile smartphone. Interesting is uh, maybe that uh, the very 
left uh, bar is uh, the survey of 2007 and the very very right bar, the blue one, is uh, the last survey in 2016. So you see, for example, that these mobile smartphone devices um, were increasing um, in the year of uh, 2010 up to now to 100%. So before, uh, students did just own the media-enriched phones, as you remember, for example. Yeah, um, then the question, of course, um, personal computers, um, desktop computers, you see that it's an increase. Uh, now only 60% of our students just own a desktop computer. Uh, about uh, more than 70% own a laptop or a netbook. That means that uh, very many students own also two devices, a PC, a netbook, and of course a mobile smartphone. Yeah, so this, uh, the, the three devices who uh, really are in the ownership of uh, more or less uh, the most of our students. Um, of course, um, the operating system of these mobile smartphones um, and Android, of course, here you see about uh, 70 percent or uh, of our students have Android phones, um, the rest uh, more or less um, iPhones. Um, you see this is about 30%, so there are only just few students who own, for example, Windows phones or um, uh, other operating systems. That means also for us as a university that we have to provide Android as well as uh, iPhone applications. Um, and that is Then we have more or less 100% of our students. Interesting uh, is also that we, of course, in 2007 asked uh, for iPods and MP3 player um, for the audio. And, uh, of course, uh, this uh, more or less replaced by uh, the smartphones. For example, you see this was a drop down from uh, an MP3 player, for example, 50% to now it is about 10% who just owned an MP3 player. Interesting is maybe also um, the area of the e-reader. Uh, Kindle or something like that. That is uh, uh, about uh, 12, 13 percent of our students have just as uh, an e-reader. That's also interesting in uh, terms of uh, if you think of e-books, for example, having to deliver uh, our learning content uh, as an e-book for uh, these e-readers. And um, I would say it's about uh, every fifth of our students just owned such a device. Yeah, and we, for the first time, we also asked uh, for power packs, for example, because uh, it seems to be also very interesting who just owns power packs to have uh, power also on the move. And you see that there's a, a nearly 30 to 35 percent of our students, so more than one third, just also own an own power pack to get power also on the move. Yeah, um, maybe also interesting is, uh, of course, uh, the area of um, tablets. Um, how can we? What can we say about tablets? You see, an iPad own about um, 13, 13, 14 percent of our students, and uh, other tablets are at, uh, about more than 10 percent. But it's uh, not about uh, 20 to 30 percent of our students have just also such a device. The second um, question is about the communication behavior. The communication behavior is the question, what do you use for your communication on a daily or nearly daily basis? And um, of course, um, it's what not surprising in 2007, the number one um, was just email. Yeah, so every student said on a daily basis, I'm using emails uh, because I also need to communicate with the university or with my school. And you see that's about 90% in 2007. And um, of course, the second uh, huge part was uh, the short messages services, SMS, um, also used uh, on a daily basis by 90%. And uh, the very first uh, real change um, in uh, in this uh, question was in 2009. You see, for example, this was this uh, black bar. Then we have a change in the communication behavior concerning Facebook, for example. You see, in this year, we have, also in, in 2008, we have just uh, 15 percent uh, who are using Facebook on a daily basis. And uh, in 2009, just one year later, we have was a big switch from and a big jump to nearly 70 percent. So this was the time we have talking about that uh, now the Facebook generation is coming to our university. And you see it's um, rather stable. We have a little increase to 80 percent and nowadays is a decrease. So we have uh, nearly the same uh, 
percentage as we had in 2009, also concerning uh, the social media platform Facebook. Interesting for um, the users of different uh, platforms that, for example, the uh, Google Plus or uh, Twitter um, never did uh, this uh, real jump. And we have also just a very few students who are just using also this kind of social media platforms. The second and uh, much bigger jump uh, and difference in this um, uh, diagram is um, this one in the middle. It's called also the now WhatsApp generation. We talked uh, this uh, three years bef um, ago in 2013. I'm just talked uh, at same at this conference that the WhatsApp generation is coming to the university. So we have a change from one year to another, uh, from zero to 80 percent of our students using using for the daily basis for their communication WhatsApp. And it was increasing a little bit yeah, in the uh, year 2015. And uh, the very interesting thing is this uh, was the first time in our survey after nine years, if I draw the line here, that uh, the most used communication uh, tool was WhatsApp, uh, even higher than email, for example. So email dropped down and we have also uh, the use of WhatsApp and therefore we just last year I told um, at this conference that the, the WhatsApp generation now um, has a much more use than, for example, email. And you see, um, this year it was uh, again increasing and we have more than 90% of our students who are using WhatsApp uh, on a daily basis. So that is just the number one in their communication behavior. Interesting, of course, is also uh, the use of Skype and instant messaging tool that you see that uh, Skype was uh, at its most peak in 2011. And now we are decreasing uh, because of the additional or the different kinds of possibilities of different instant messaging tools, of course, for example, Facebook Messenger or something like that. And this is increasing and Skype is decreasing. So that means that more and more people are using different kinds of platforms for their communication, but they are using, of course, more instant messaging uh, as example in 2007. And the last thing is, uh, we for the first time, we were also asking for Snapchats this year because there's, we know there's a trend from the US that there's more and more people are using Snapchat. And uh, currently our students uh, say that they are using Snapchat on a daily basis for more than 40% of our students. So I'm excited if this trend is uh, moving forward also in the next year. Yeah, the next... Um, question was the usage of e-learning platforms um, at school. Um, we have a so-called Moodle initiative in Austria. That means that every, schools, uh, every school in Austria can get an own Moodle platform. And uh, due to the fact that we are also using Moodle at our university, we are very highly interested if they can use this kind of platform and they are used to use uh, uh, all this uh, stuff. And you see, for example, uh, it's dropping down. That means uh, in 2009, we have, uh, first of all, also for the first time asked this question. Um, many, many students say they have never used any e-learning platform in schools. And today we decreased dramatically. So that means that also on schools, more and more these uh, web applications, e-learning platforms are used. And that is of quite a good uh, result for us. And we are also asked, um, what are you using at schools? It's just e-learning platforms or what are you mean with uh, technology and learning, for example. And you see, of course, number one uh, in terms of uh, use of educational technology is just office software. Yeah? So they, they just need Word and PowerPoint and Excel. Uh, for their typically daily uh, stuff they have to do. But of course, uh, uh, Moodle is not so huge or for example, online current online courses is the most term they say they have never done any online course before when they are coming to our university. Um, for me, a very interesting question is also, uh, is the kind of printed paper or school book, the classical traditional book also changing to a more digital form? Because so we have uh, ideas in our Ministry of Education that also maybe every student or every school children in future get a tablet. And of course, if they get a tablet, they need just digital books. Yeah. And uh, the idea was is is there see can we see a shift for example that more and more teachers 
are using digital uh, learning content instead of traditional school and print books. And you see, for example, we just have asked him as a timeline and, so, and say, just give us um, a hint uh, where you do you think um, how many percent of your of the whole learning content is traditional school book and how many uh, traditional things are different and you see that if, uh, our students say that about uh, 75 percent uh, uh, school books and about 25% are uh, already digital content. And it's the same question, uh, analog and digital material in comparison. And you also see that there's a, about, uh, they see that there's a, in this kind, there's a little bit more analog, but also the digital material is, is growing and growing as far as we can see. Yeah. And this is a very complicated, um, Diagram. This uh, complicated means that we are just asking very detailed uh, which kind of software or application do you use, and when do you? If you use this application, then do you all uh, do also uh, use it for learning? And uh, when you are using it for learning, do you uh, do you use it very often or just um, sometimes? And um, the very interesting things are the same that so you say there is the the huge group of the office software. Yeah, that means as a PowerPoint word, they are just telling us that they are used only as often for learning, for example, this this orange bar. Then, of course, we have uh, the huge group of YouTube and Wikipedia. They are just using for learning. And we have these communication tools, SMS, email, and of course, WhatsApp. That is the group of the communication tools. They are just using it. And uh, there are interesting things, of course, of the cloud service, uh, just uh, like Dropbox, for example, for sharing materials. So this is the typical uh, learning uh, behavior of our school children. Office software, cloud services for just changing materials, communication, WhatsApp, and then you say need YouTube and Wikipedia. That is also a quite simple result. Um, that is more or less the same graph, also um, in a different direction, where you can see, of course, as we are just ask, uh, ask, what do you never use? And you see, for example, that as a YouTube and Wikipedia is uh, in uh, in use, of course. Yeah, we also did a comparison and comparison between um, the difference between 2011 and 2016. Also, we want to visualize uh, the ch uh, what changed in this uh, time frame, for example. And of course, yeah, um, if the if you have a very uh, big bar, there was a huge change between this time. And um, of course, in this in this direction, that is the positive change. That means they are using more and more. And that is a negative change. That so that they don't use it anymore, for example, for learning or, or not so much as in years before. What are the huge things? Of course, uh, the most impressive thing is WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp, so the, of course, we have this tool not in 2010. So we have the most uh, and uh, dramatically change uh, in the tool and application of WhatsApp that are uh, now used also for learning. We have, of course, a huge change and increase in the video platform YouTube. So that means that more and more students are um, just comfortable to watch videos for the learning. We have um, also a change in dictionaries. Yeah, also that you, uh, students are using online dictionaries. We have this change in the Dropbox, of course, and instant messaging tools that are the, the, the successor uh, of the last years. And we have a drop down in uh, short message services, Facebook, for example, because um, WhatsApp was coming and now they are using more and more this tool. Yeah, and uh, every year we tried also to do a very special uh, thing, a special question. Uh, that means uh, we like to focus on uh, something. And uh, we call this year this uh, so-called mobile, social, smart and media driven. Why? Um, and we, we just like to take a look, a look, a look what changed um, the last uh, 10 years dramatically. Um, can we see and change in the technological devices, in the communication behavior, online applications? What are the reasons for these changes, of course? And uh, what is the long lasting trend? What can we, when we can the of that. Um, and this is uh, just a diagram which show you um, the difference in the devices what is the, uh, in 2007 that's the blue bar in 2011 that is the green bar and 2016 the red bar and of course not very surprising uh, the most increase you have in this uh, mobile smartphones uh, we have uh, more or less constant 
ownership in laptops. And uh, we have an, a little increase and a decrease of uh, personal computers. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, the main thing. And as I mentioned before, an increase, uh, a decrease of MP3 players and of course of the iPod. Yeah, when we uh, take a look to the general daily general use yeah, of the different applications. Then, uh, as I mentioned before, we have uh, this change in uh, the communication behavior of the shift from the short messenger services to WhatsApp. We have a uh, change, of course, an increase of YouTube, an increase of Wikipedia, and um, more or less a little bit decrease in this Office software, but this is not a very huge one. Yeah, and um, that is the same uh, thing um, again, and uh, for learning, for example, uh, the same thing, WhatsApp and uh, YouTube is increasing. Um, maybe one very interesting aspect, because uh, it's just, we also, um, students used YouTube in 2007 for learning, but it's also interesting that you see in 2007, we have this level in the use of videos for learning. And in 2017, now we have more than 60%. We have a dramatically increase that also students are more and more using videos for their learning. That is also very interesting for the university. That means that we now have to begin to transfer our knowledge also via videos. That is one of the most important uh, results of this uh, survey. Um, i like to conclude um, the short uh, survey. First of all, um, you see the mobile devices are just number one. Everyone, more or less, of our students um, own a smartphone and have, of course, um, internet um, at every time because of the mobile phones. The smartphones, of course, replaced uh, the classical uh, media-enriched phones. Um, we have uh, a constantly uh, connection to the internet. This is uh, just um, a fact. Um, the communications uh, switch also more and more also from this peer-to-peer -peer communication like so short messaging services to this social media platform and WhatsApp. And uh, we have also in general an increase of this online application uh, for using for learning. Also that's, that's also very interesting that more and more uh, online learning is just um, on a daily basis and uh, our school children are used to use uh, especially videos uh, for their learning. It's, as we mentioned here, the videos have now become also one of the most important sources of information for learning, so that the, the students are just used to search for this kind of information. If they don't understand in school, they just look at the YouTube and uh, get a video to um, more and more can learn uh, more deeply. And um, also cloud systems like Dropbox or something uh, on the rise, so they just are needed for exchange as a, their materials, of course. Yes, um, that was my presentation. Uh, thank you again for the attention. Thank you again uh, for your interest. If you have any questions, uh, sorry that I cannot um, answer it in real time, but uh, just feel free to contact us uh, via email address or Twitter, or Facebook, whatever. Um, I would really enjoy to answer your questions. Thank you very much for your attention.